over sexual exploitation and abuse allegations in their UN peacekeeping mission in the DRC. So we're going to go back now to New York for that promised interview with our show and Bryce Pete. Uh, uh, indeed, uh, this is a, a bit of a stain on what is otherwise shown been a good record by South African troops. And in that package that we sent Bongani, of course, the Secretary General making it sure, uh, make it very clear when we asked him this question that uh, the South Africa really appreciated the contribution that South Africa has made as a two troop contributing uh, country uh, to UN peacekeeping missions. Of course, the focus uh, now on uh, sexual exploitation and abuse allegations against a number of SANDF troops serving in the MINUSCO mission in the DRC. The minister has just come down from a very robust engagement with the Department of Peacekeeping Operations on the 35th floor here at UN headquarters. Uh, Minister Nosivibe Mapisa Ngakula is my guest uh, here this afternoon. Minister, thank you for speaking with us. How did that meeting go, given how we framed this discussion? No, you've just said it was a very robust. It wasn't it. I think it was important for, for us to talk to, to one another and not talk above or even past one another so that we hear one another out because I think that South Africa has done extremely well in peacekeeping. We've been part of the peace co troop contributing countries in peacekeeping since uh, the inception of our democracy. You'll recall that South Africans were there in the TRC. You'll recall that South Africa as a country was there in Cote d'Ivoire. You'll recall that we lost uh, even though that was not a peacekeeping mission in the Central African Republic, but we lost 15 soldiers yep. on a mission, on a bilateral basis in the Central African Republic. And, uh, and we are now in the TRC and we've been part of MONUSCO for the past 11 years. And since 2014, we have now what is called the fourth intervention brigade, the first ever mm -hmm. uh, Chapter 7 uh, brigade. Uh, under the United Nations and uh, our forces have done extremely well there too. However, there are challenges. As you've said, the sexual exploitation and abuse cases uh, have increased and of course the way we've looked into the matter, it seems here we have a situation where in 2018 we then had a number of reported cases of women who were left behind by soldiers with children and therefore that has shot up the numbers. So this is essentially a paternity issue, right? This is not necessarily raped or anything, this is about paternity. No, no, no and we have no rape cases so far. But this is still misconduct, Minister, and, and despite the achievements, this is a stain on, on the record. It is, actually, I will, I'll never be defensive of that. Remember, peacekeepers are not supposed to fraternize with civilians. Remember, these women in those communities are women and children who are vulnerable. The reason why you have the peacekeeping force, it is precisely to protect the most vulnerable women and children. And therefore, when you abuse your power by entering into a relationship or sexual relationship, even if it's conceptual, the point is it should never happen, it should never have happened. So we can never in South Africa stand here and say it was correct, there was no rape. We are hanging our heads in shame that we have a couple of people, a small group of people which of course do some of these things and in the process tarnish the image of South Africa. So, so you've just come from a very robust discussion. How do we move this process forward? What have you committed to? What does the UN want? How do we thread this needle? Actually have an action plan which was submitted to, to uh, the UN. We also have, President is part of what is called the leadership circle, which deals with some of those issues. We've, I've, I've signed a compact committing South Africa to dealing with issues of sexual ex exploitation. So we've done everything on our side. And I can assure you, if you were to visit Debrecht, which is where our forces prepared before they depart on a, for deployment, you will hear every day from those who conduct this training and even from the trainees themselves that SIA is the buzzword. However, what clearly has happened here, you've had uh, 
our, our penalties have not served as a deterrent. We charge people, we penalize people, but has that sent a message that this is a no-no, seemingly no. Hence, the speed with which we are dealing with the process of passing now in Parliament the Military Discipline Bill, which, by the way, suggests that if you commit that kind of a uh, crime in the South African National Defence Force 1, you are dishonorably discharged, which we've, it was a decision we've already taken and we've already implemented it. But what is contained in that bill actually is you will then go to prison for 10 years if you are found guilty of such a crime. So when do you hope to have that bill uh, go through it Parliament? It's in Parliament right now. The bill is in Parliament, it went through Cabinet, it is now in Parliament. And we parliamentary committee processes are underway and hopefully they'll pass this before the end of the session. You'll agree, Minister, that this obviously is a distraction from the good work that peacekeepers do around the world, uh, particularly in a country like the Democratic Republic of the Congo that is uh, going to elections on the 23rd of December this year. There's a great deal of concern that things could unravel in a, in a very negative way. What is your assessment of the role of the UN, the role of SADC, uh, as we move to this crunch period in, in uh, the national uh, uh, domestic policy in, in the DRC? It is our responsibility as a region, it is our responsibility as a nation to continue to give member states of our region support when they go through election. And South Africa, through SADAC, has committed itself to giving all the support required by the Democratic Republic of Congo, if only to ensure that there is a free fair and transparent election in that country. In terms of the systems, what they use, what they do not do, it's, the, it's up to them. But what is important is that, yes, those are issues of sovereignty of the Democratic Republic of Congo. But our responsibility as the nations in that region is to make sure that all players participate in this election and whatever result comes out is a reflection of a credible expression of the people of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Final question for you, Minister. Are South African troops going to be expelled as the recommendation from DPCO that was no, sent no. to the SG? There's nothing about expelling nothing. troops from South Africa. Yes, there is a discussion uh, of a report which came out of an assessment by the region itself together with uh, MONUSCO that you needed to, to have a reduction of the forces and for me the point is when you talk reduction you should talk about reduction of the framework brigade which uh, battalion which is currently in the Democratic Republic of Congo not necessarily the reduction of the force intervention brigade in any event even when there is talk of a reduction of the if if any of the force intervention brigade it should never ever be linked to a withdrawal of the capabilities which we need to support our troops on the ground. So my concession to them was that, look, if you look in the direction of a reduction of our members, there has to be, it has to be a particular number. We can't talk beyond the number 50. And secondly, it should also not be linked to withdrawal of capabilities. Whatever number we deploy in the Democratic Republic of Congo, South Africa would like to make sure that we keep the capabilities we, we, we require, particularly the Roy Falk, which has been proven to have performed miracles when we neutralized M23. Madam Minister, always good to see you. Thank you so much for coming straight out of that meeting and coming to talk Thank with us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Nosi Viwe Mapisa Ngakula is, of course, South Africa's Defence Minister, Minister also responsible for military and veteran affairs. Uh, just uh, running down here to make uh, this exclusive interview, uh, saying South African troops are going to uh, be staying put. They will not be expelled as it relates to allegations of sexual exploitation and abuse. Uh, but as you heard from the Minister, very complicated, a very complex scenario developing in the DRC, uh, but South African troops will be remaining on the ground. It's back to you in studio. We'll have to leave it there with our show and Bryce Pease.
in New York getting that exclusive interview with the Defence Minister. And of course it raises all sorts of questions about South Africa's influence in the region. As uh, Sharon and the Minister discussed, uh, we've had an otherwise uh, good record in terms of our peacekeeping efforts. Uh, there aren't specific allegations of rape. Uh, these of course are children born to mothers, vulnerable women, we should add, uh, uh, in the DRC and South African troops. We'll have to see how it all unfolds in terms of that parliamentary process uh, that bill now before MPs. Right, stay with us. It is a Wednesday.